Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on February 18th, 2023. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet. Welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your update, daily update on our sun and earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. And here we have the imagery of that X-class solar flare, which came from the northwest region of our sun, top left. You can see it there in the last few images as SDO updated from last night. And we were expecting this imagery to come in. And what an amazing sight here. Right hand side, we're going to see that large X-class flare. Boom, huge plasma ropes stretching probably 8 to 10 Earths tall. Looking at the last 48 hours outgoing, we do have a couple sunspot regions getting ready to turn away and as well some pretty active regions that are already outgoing. Closer look here at 304 angstroms at that solar flare and look at that large plasma shot just after the flare. Boom. Another look here at that flare, 171 angstroms. Amazing images here brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory, mixed with daily events worldwide. Looking at multi-spectrum, this is the largest flare that we've seen in quite some time. But multi-spectrum, you can really see the WAP and the energies that are associated with this large flare. Looking at the full disk at multi-spectrum. Watch for that flash. X-class solar flare. Boom. So our solar X-ray flux remains in a heightened C range. We've seen multiple M-class solar flares over the, this past week. And now we've got some major activity. Northwest northeast southwest and southeast on our sun huge coronal mass ejection is on its way to earth and we've got two earth facing coronal holes right now southern hemisphere and just below the equator on our sun geomagnetic conditions solar x-ray flux remains heightened after seeing two c-class range solar flares today X2.2 solar flare. Proton flux remains steady. Geomagnetic activity remains at a KP2. Looking at the ISWA space prediction spiral from yesterday and then switch it over to today. And it looks like we are going to be getting whapped here. 19th into the 20th. This is a very fast moving coronal mass ejection. Speeds upward of probably 2200 kilometers per second. And what does that mean for us? Well, that means everything for our planet because everything is connected to the electromagnetic field. Our weather, our minds, and our hearts. So watch for things to get a little bit wacky here. 20th to the 23rd, in which I was already forecasting last week. A lot of strange energies that are shifting. Solar cycles that are coming into play and as well our Earth and our magnetic field. We're that little yellow circle there. Having a look at real-time solar wind, we're sitting at 457 kilometers per second right now after being up to about 488 last night, but very sporadic solar wind ahead of already some incoming activity. And then we look at Lasco 2, and this is where we will see that large blast from the top left region of our sun M-class solar flare with a massive coronal mass ejection. 17th into the 18th there. Unbelievable amount of plasma associated with this thing. Amazing images here too. From SOHO and Solar Dynamics Observatory. Wow. Last go too. What an amazing view. Schumann resonance for today is another low power of 7. It's been steady at 7 for the past 3 days. 
Having a look at earthquakes past 24 hours, we're sitting just under 200 earthquakes. Just had a sizable 5.7 earthquake, South Sandwich Plate, Scotia Plate, South Sandwich Islands. And that was more northern islands of that subduction zone. Also a 4.5 here in South America. Monte Patria in Chile, 105 kilometer depth. Mid-Atlantic Ocean, another 4.7 central. 5.2 earthquake here, Costa Rica. Minor activity continues, Puerto Rico. Mexico reporting a 4.4. Quiet across the North American plate and up into Canada. Quiet through Hawaii. A lot of minor seismicity building through Alaska. Atka, Alaska seeing a 4.4 as well. A 3.8 here reported Cantwell, Alaska. 4.3 there. Kamchatsky, Russia off the coast of Kamchatka. 4.5 Lugu, Taiwan. As well, minor activity through Indonesia. 4.4, 4.1. 5.3 there, Solomon Islands as well. Some deep earthquakes, 549 kilometer depth there, 560 kilometer depth. And I'm just getting reports now we had another 5.4 earthquake, Tonga region, 550 kilometer depth. So expecting a larger shallower earthquake to follow. Heads up, everybody. Banda, Indonesia, 4.3. 4.2 there, Bamo, Myanmar. And a 4.2 Indian plate. Turkey's still or Turkey is still rocking there with a 5.0 magnitude. And Greece seeing some activity here, 4.7, just above the Mediterranean plate there. And that's the last 24 hours for earthquakes. Give you a quick glance at the last seven days around the world. And give this quick moment to thank you all for tuning in. Please don't forget to smash that like button and maybe share with your friends and family from around the world. Don't be afraid to come into the 24-7 earthquake live stream as well. You can chat with friends from all over the place and as well, stay up to date on all the most recent alerts and earthquakes. Much love. Be ready. Carrying on here with the most recent satellite imagery and volcanoes. Not too many volcanoes to talk about. But Fuego in Guatemala, as well, Popo in Mexico, it's mostly Guatemala. I can't see any other reports here of volcanoes getting updated today. So Guatemala is the hotspot for volcanoes. 190 active hazards, and about half of them are flood alerts. A lot of them through southeastern United States, as well as central regions of Africa. Having a look at... Satellite imagery from around the world, low pressure system still affecting northwest Morocco, heading into Spain, as well a tightly whipped system here in the East Pacific, bringing in some moisture to southern California and as well through Mexico, and a watch for some intense systems here to develop through the United States, and a lot of moisture through Hawaiian islands as that low slowly treks west. A couple long lines of atmospheric rivers here affecting uh, Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, down into New Zealand, and as well, tropical systems here are going to be continuing to build through parts of Northern Territory of Australia. Tropical Cyclone Freddy is still alive as a Category 3, packing winds 204 kilometers per hour, still on a forecast track for the east coast of Africa. Heading straight across Madagascar. That's right. Having a look here at Ventu Sky, showing the next few days for weather forecast, overlooking North America, low pressure center south of Hudson Bay, low pressure center coming through the prairies for Monday, and then 21st to the 22nd, Watch this low move in from the west coast and as well a low moving out of Colorado here develops. And then we've got this big extreme weather event from the 22nd into the 23rd through southeastern United States. Mixed bag of precipitation through Ontario and possible some heavy snows on the backside of this system. 
but it's going to be interesting. The temperature transition that will literally happen over a 24-hour period. Heads up, lots of moisture here in the long-range forecast for North America. Overlooking South America, daily evaporation rains could be heavy at times through southern parts of Brazil, Buenos Aires, as you have a low just off the coast there. Other than that, not too much to talk about. Overlooking South Africa and Madagascar, Tropical Cyclone Freddy here looks like it's going to make northward landfall of Reunion and Mauritius here, these small islands off the coast of Madagascar, very populated and beautiful islands. Freddy will just be grazing you Monday into Tuesday, making landfall Wednesday through Madagascar right across the island and then heading towards the east coast. Tanzania. Overlooking Europe, you've got a couple low pressure systems here affecting you coming in from the North Atlantic this week. Most of the moisture will be staying east until about Wednesday or Thursday before you see high pressure ridge throwing in some moisture from the Atlantic. No major storms affecting you this week. Southeast Pacific and Asia or West Pacific and Southeast Asia. No major storms developing in the long range here. And then Australia, New Zealand, Northern Territory, you've still got a low that's going to be battering the coastlines there all across the northern part of the continent through, uh, through Australia. And then later in the week, long range forecast, watch some moisture developing for Southeastern parts, but most of it will be staying north. Leave you here with a quick look at the Pacific Ocean. A large high pressure ridge eventually will move away here, allowing all of these low pressure systems from Alaska and the Bering Strait to come in. We've still got four weeks of winter, folks. Much love. Hope you enjoyed today's update. If you did, smack that like button. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun and get your daily do. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.